Thanks. So I am hugging son Petey, and for the first time in 70-some years, baseball has a hit leader other than Ty Cobb. you got to remember the modern era of baseball started in 1800, or excuse me, in the year 1900. Cobb has been the all-time hit leader since about 1916, before 1920 at any rate. Now along comes a kid from the west side of Cincinnati who's now 44 years old and has 4,193 hits and building. Now, at Riverfront Stadium at this hour, Walt Mayer is standing by. Pete Rose is still holding court with the media. Walt Mayer to update us from Riverfront Stadium. Thank you very much, uh, Don Burroughs. This indeed is a moment to remember. We've needed moments like this, haven't been any, you know, for quite some time. Pete Rose holding court. Pete Jr. is standing at his side along with Jim Ferguson, the publicity director of the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, he is talking to the media, the media loving every moment of it, yeah, he's, describing he's the moments nice uh, of the hit, the game, right. everything that transpired the this evening. Sort of Let's listen uh, in. Came out tonight and took batting practice and joked with the photographers and and uh, didn't take it quite as serious as I did last night. Um, no, I, I talked to him before the game today. You know, about about two o'clock when I left home, before I left home, and he just said, "Have fun with it." He said, "It's great." He said, "No matter, you went over four last night." He said, "You lost the games," and you know. But that's the bad thing about it. But uh, you know, just go go out there and have fun, and and uh, you could just tell. Uh, I think that my approach to the first at bat. I mean, Billy, Billy Demar said, "I knew you were going to get a hit, or I knew he was going to hit it hard, somewhere." Uh, just the way you were, you know, taking the pitch and looking at it and different things like that. So, uh, you know, I just I was thinking a lot last night about, you know. Uh, big series in New York and a lot of writers want to get there and see that thing and you know there's a lot of you hate to hold anybody up I mean uh, you know I although it's, it really shouldn't bother me but I don't like to inconvenience anybody I mean you know I appreciate you guys being here and 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 reporting on me as like you do and uh, I mean I could I could you know start pressing and go over four tonight and over four tomorrow night and you guys say what the hell kind of ball where is he you know is he gonna get the hit you know, so I just said, hey, let's just go out and have fun and, and get a couple knocks and uh, score a couple runs and, and try to play good defense. Were you aware of the fight in the San Diego dugout? Were you aware of the fight in the San Diego dugout? Yeah, someone told me, uh, I guess right after they took the field, and uh, I don't know what it was, but uh, there's no way in the world that Martinez could ever catch that ball. I mean, no, there's no way in the world that, I don't know what the fight was about, but uh, if it was about the left fielder supposedly supposed to catch that Parker's ball. I mean, there's no way in the world uh, that, that any left fielder could catch that ball if he's playing Dave Parker right, which he was. That's why uh, I didn't even hesitate going from first to third, because I knew he had no shot at it. Even if he fakes, I knew he had no shot, uh, you know, at, uh, at catching the ball. And uh, is that what it was about? I would imagine. That's what I thought that Martinez should have caught the ball or something? Well, if, if Martinez catches that ball, uh, We'll trade for him tomorrow because he'd be Superman. I mean, because the ball was just one of those kind of. Guys. He, I told him it was his, it was his Pittsburgh stroke because he was he spent all day in Pittsburgh and flying back and forth, so he hit it on the end of the bat. But it was a good stroke. That ball took an astro. All right, Pete Rose struck a blow for Nationals pastime this evening, to be sure. He struck a blow for the city of Cincinnati. Pete loving every moment of it, and uh, judging by the outpouring of adulation this evening at Riverfront Stadium, it's going to take Cincinnati a long, long time to come down from it all, and rightly so. Walt Mayer, live from Riverfront Stadium. Back to you, Don. Uh, there may be a lot of places in the news tonight, but I would dare say Cincinnati throughout the country right now, the city of Cincinnati, is getting the major mention in newscasts. Of course, it's especially significant here, but, but wherever. Uh, around the country is going to be mentioning Cincinnati and Pete Rose because of uh, what he's accomplished over his career and in particular tonight. Well, Don, I think Cincinnatians realize that. In fact, right now, from the celebration in the stands, that celebration is now spilled into the streets of Cincinnati. Eyewitness 12's Mary Kruko is downtown somewhere to fill us in on what's going on. Mary? Ready? Do we have time to interview with this man? 
Kowalski. We've got to get a quick interview with him. From Denton, Ohio. I've been here three nights in a row, and I've stayed here every night until he hit it. And Pete's the greatest. West High, West High, all the way. All right, these fans are absolutely having a great time tonight. Brandon, as you can hear, they are on Pete Rose Way. You can hear him chanting his name. We're going to go back to you now. Okay, thank you, Mary. Any idea how many people are down there? Can you see over all those folks? I can't see two feet around me, yet alone behind me. Okay, thank you. Okay. Mary Kruko reporting live from Second Street, soon to be Pete Rose.